Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. This episode is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Visit tnvacation.com to start planning your next trip to Tennessee. Thank you, Alexis, and welcome, everybody, to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Alexis, as usual, before we uh, join our guests, share with me something you experienced recently at Discovery Park of America. Um, well, I recently found out that the Liberty Bell that we have in Freedom Square, the the full size full size replica, it took over a year to cast, and it was um, cast by one of the oldest um, family owned businesses in the Netherlands. I know, and, the, and they're the same people that did the original Liberty Bell. Very interesting. And every I year, didn't know that. yeah, there you go. Something I could I could inspire you to see beyond a little. That's and cool. and um, every year we July the fourth, we join the rest of the nation in ringing ringing the Liberty Bell. That's always a, a big a big event here sure. at Discovery Park. So that, that's a good one. Um, so today's very special guest is someone who I've personally been fascinated to watch um, his career and, and the efforts that he and his family are doing grow. Um, it's Josh Cooper of Uploads of Fun. Welcome, Josh. Thank you all for having me. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Alexis. I'm really excited to be here. So, so first of all, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Tell us a little bit about, you know, where you grew up, um, where, where you came from and what kind of things influenced your uh, present day career. So I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, up North, and that was very uneventful up there. (laughs) Um, I think what drew, drew me to anything where people are looking at what I do is I was in a lot of bands growing up, you know, I played guitar and in several different bands, just trying to, trying to make it, trying to become famous, I guess, you know? Um, and then we moved to Texas for a little while. And right before then though, you know, something important happened. Well, two important things happened before then. Let's rewind just a little bit. Sorry about that. Married my wife, Rachel, shout out to her. Uh, That's we've important. been married. Yeah. <laughs> we've been married for 18 years. We just had our 18th wedding anniversary, um, a couple of days ago. And then we had two children, Jackson and Calvin, who you'll see featured in Uploads of Fun. And we moved to Austin, Texas, thankful to get away from the snow. I will never move back to anywhere where there's any kind of major snow. And then we moved to Tennessee, and that's where we are now in Memphis, Tennessee. And my career has always been in creative work ever since about the year 2000, right around high school graduation, I was in creative work, doing graphic design, marketing, web design, anything creative, I was, I was doing it. And I worked all the way up to creative director um, and just did that for a long time and just kind of felt like I wasn't able to actually be creative because I felt where I got to a place where clients and my boss were always kind of making the work and that just got frustrating for me. So somehow or another, we we've got into the social media thing and it was my kids that got us into it. They begged me and begged me to make a YouTube channel (laughs) and being a creative person. I said, no, it's going to be so much work. This is on top of everything else I'm doing. And I was right. It is, it is a lot of work, but I wouldn't change anything because now I, I do this full time. I'm able to create with my family which is a double-edged sword working with kids and working with your family is, is very tough, but it teaches me a lot and I'm really thankful for it. And it brought us here where we are today. So let's back up a little bit. Um, yeah. when you were in the bands, uh, mm-hmm. did you, what did you play or did you sing or what, what was your role? Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's interesting. I'm not sure. Um, how much of the audience is familiar with screamo, but we were, kind of heavy metal screamo so i played guitar and screamed a lot and sang so (laughs) not like screaming in pain but like you know just screaming the lyrics uh so yeah (laughs) that's 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 what i did 
And and um, were you also uh, were you also the group of kids who were making videos and uh, using uh, film and and video that kind of thing as well? Always have used everything available to me at every part of my journey. Uh, you know, the I remember when MySpace came out. And, you know, social media just started. We were on there. And I even had people in, in the band and people around me tell me, this is a fad. You know, no, the social media stuff's going to go away. Don't waste your time on it kind of a thing. <laughs> so, but always made videos, always doing photography, just always trying to get better at what we were doing and always trying to look, you know, as a band, you're always trying to look as professional as you possibly can, even though you're like four kids in a garage, you know, but it doesn't matter if you're only four kids in a garage. If you have the creative ability and the mindset that you can do it, you'll eventually figure it out. I mean, that's why there are so many bands that are successful. It's really just, I, I feel like it's the belief in your dream and you keep pushing that no matter what happens. Where in, where in Texas were you? We were in Austin. Oh, yeah. wow. That's a, a hub of creativity. <laughs> um, I, I actually went to high school in Fort Worth, Texas. Okay. Um, and, and my group of friends, we had one friend who had like a little Super 8 camera and we did all kinds of movies and music videos and um Mark Singleton was his name. We've kind of lost track, and I've always wondered if Mark Singleton still has those videos somewhere. Um, I would love to see him, but um, that would be cool. Yeah, wouldn't it be? I'm, I'm yep. hoping maybe maybe he's listening. If you're listening, Mark Singleton, get a hold to me so I can see those videos. But <laughs> maybe they're already um, on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, I, that would be a surprise. <laughs> um, so, um, so you uh, were the creative kid, and you obviously ended up also in the in the uh, visual arts of doing graphic design. And um, did you uh, go down that path in college? Actually, I, I mean, I went to community college, but I never graduated from college. But starting the band is the band and being in bands is really what got me into visual arts because we had to be our own designers. I mean, we're underground garage bands trying to create album artwork. And I remember our first album art we created in uh, paint on Windows. We created it in paint. Um, it was it was horrible. Um and it was a horrible process to try and create any, any kind of graphic design in Microsoft Paint. But we accomplished it and we used our home printer to print out CD covers and took 100 CDs and came back with 99. It was great. So what was your, um, what was your first computer? Oh, man. So first computer was an HP. No, 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 no. I'm wrong. My first computer was homemade. <laughs> by a friend of my dad's and this was before this was even before we had internet at home i was just playing computer games and creating stuff in crappy little programs on a computer my first computer with the internet though was like an hp that we got from i'm trying to think of the name of the computer store they were a big store but they're gone now it's not radio shack <laughs> no <laughs> no um uh, if I think of it, I'll, I'll let you know. But it was one of those computer stores that was kind of a big conglomerate. They were a, a franchise. And we we got, I think we got a credit card from there because my family, we grew up, you know, not well to do, but not poor. But, you know, didn't have a lot of money, got a credit card, bought this computer, and we were off to the races. <laughs> now, what, what were your parents doing for a living during this time? So my mom has always been in, in health care, but like home health aid. Um, going into homes and helping elderly that need help. And then my dad, at the time, was a corrections officer at the Cuyahoga County Jail. So they've got this kid who's doing uh, heavy metal screaming music and mm -hmm. wanting to buy computers. And um, were they perplexed or did they encourage you? Or what, what was that all about? You know, my parents, and I think that's where I got it from, always encouraged me like always tried to do the best that they could with what they had to help me achieve my dreams um and i think that's where i got it from with my boys um i think for any parent out there listening if your kid is interested in something and they're passionate about it um 
depending on what it is, not, not everything, but you know, for the most part, like push them, give them the tools that they need. And that's, that's what my parents did as much as they possibly could. And they were always, especially with the bands, they were our biggest fan. You know, my dad just sent me a t-shirt, you know, he'll send me random stuff from time to time in the mail, like a t-shirt, an old CD that he has from our bands. And I'm just like, how do you still have this? And I remember him taking me to concerts. He would drive me. This is before I could drive. He would drive me to concerts and then go see a movie. You oh, know? that's great. Yeah, it was great. it was very cool. He was very supportive. He always explains it like this. He they bought me my grandma bought me a guitar, my first guitar, and he said it sounded like noise. It sounded like trash until it eventually sounded like music. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and, great. And I never had a lesson. Taught myself just downloaded tabs and then started to write my own music as soon as i figured out chords and everything i could just always kind of play by ear and kind of figure out what i want to do so and so eventually along the way you end up leading with graphic design is that right you end Mm -hmm. up that's kind of become how you put food on the table yes Um, what was your pathway because when you and i first encountered each other it was with the uh company that did our website so yes Discovery Parks website. So tell me a little bit about the path that you took to end up there. Yeah, I started, you know, with the band doing design and and things of that nature. And I decided I would go to community college for graphic design. And as soon as I did, I ended up getting a job in graphic design. So college kind of fell by the wayside. And I just started working in that craft, actually making money doing websites. And then I started working for another company, just doing graphic design. And eventually what led me to Texas was I worked for a church for a little while. They were, they were a church plant. So they were very small, but they were able to pay. They wanted a graphic designer and a creative director. And it came to where they couldn't pay me anymore. And I, I wanted to still work in churches. So when you do that kind of a job in a church, you kind of have to go where the money is. So that led us to Austin. And then there were some things at the church I was working at in Austin. I won't name any names of what the church is, but I didn't agree with some of the things that were going on. That led me to Tennessee. So in Memphis, a church called Second Presbyterian, worked there for a while, and then I went to speak, which is where we met. Yeah, I'm uh, familiar with lots of folks over at Second Press. Okay, cool. Yeah, great church. Um, so um, you started working at Speak, and you're, uh, of course, this is probably, how many years ago is this? So I started Uploads of Fun in 2019, and I was work- while I was working at Second Presbyterian. Probably. So 2019 was pre-COVID? Yeah, it was before COVID. Yep. Okay, so it's before COVID, and um, I mean, social media and in the world of influencers and everything we're going through right now, it's still relatively new, mm-hmm. uh, even though it doesn't seem like it for all of us that are living it. Well, in the future, we'll look back, and this will just still be, uh, you know, the dark ages. So, um, I'm assuming that you. Uh, are using, you know, you're aware of social media because of what you do for a living. You're probably following different people. And did you have, you mentioned your kids, they're starting Mm -hmm. to push you. And how old were they at the time they started to push you into uh, wanting to do a channel? Oh man. So about 10 and six. Okay. So 10 and six, who's, who's more strongly pushing the 10 year old or the six year old? It was the six year old. Okay. It was a so, six-year-old. Oh, yeah. He was into certain like kids' YouTube channels that he would show me all the time. And I would watch like, I don't understand what these, this doesn't make, why would anyone watch this? Because it just didn't add any value. So that's where I saw, here, we can do it and we can maybe add some value. And, you know, I'm very hard on what we do. And people probably watch it and they're like, this is so simple. But the simplest stuff, I believe, is the hardest stuff to do and and to get across and to make people laugh is very hard. (laughs) So it's it's not an easy task to get someone to laugh. So I, I take I don't take it lightly. But yeah, well, it was a six year old. Have a, you guys have sort of a pattern down. I mean, you have a obviously you already have a good um uh, a good a chemistry between the three of you because you're family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's just a really good 
uh, it's funny, it's fast, it's, uh, you know, it's, you can see where it would be appealing, but you can also see the production that you guys put in. You obviously put a lot of production into it as well. So that's what I was, uh, struck by is the amount of work that went into, um, each episode that you do. So, so your, 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 um, prodigies were pushing you to get a YouTube channel going and what, what was the first, what was the first video you started oh, working on together? The first video we ever did, because I, we actually, when we hit 2 million subscribers on YouTube, we actually reacted to this first video. And I thought it was the most genius idea in the world. And I'm like, I've never seen this. And it was blindfolded finger painting. <laughs> and it is what it sounds like. We, you know, they picked a character, they were blindfolded and they painted and it's fun to watch. Cause it's, even though it's not very good, it's like a home movie, you know, kind of a thing you can kind of look back. And that's what I've seen all of this as too. I always worried when I became a dad that I wouldn't take enough pictures. I wouldn't have enough video to like, look back and, um, that is definitely not true now. And that blindfolded finger painting is one of those things I can look back on now. And they had a great time. I was having a good time, but it's just like when you look back at something you were trying to create and you're like, Oh, that just missed the mark a little bit. But for us, it's very special. And, and we had a good time and it, and it kind of started everything, you know, down the path that we're on. Now, what is your um, wife, Rachel's response to all this? Everyone thinks that she, because she doesn't appear in a lot of videos, the internet is not very smart sometimes. They just assume either there's a rift between us or they they assume one time they thought she was dead. Um, they're like, if, if she's not in the video, she can't be real. But she loves what we do. And I feel, I know this as a fact, like if, my wife wasn't supportive of this. It wouldn't work 100%. And she writes with us a lot. She's come up with some really funny videos. Um, it's like, I mean, I couldn't do it without her for sure. 100%. She's very funny. And sometimes she takes it way farther than even I do. And I hope she's listening to this and she knows that she takes it way farther than I do. And it's awesome. And does she work? <laughs> does she work? A, does she have a career of her own or is she working inside the home? Yeah, she's definitely my sugar mama for sure. Um, she <laughs> she brings home the insurance and uh, she definitely gets paid. So she works at home and she's actually done that be way before the pandemic and way before working at home was cool. When we moved to Austin, the company that she was working for asked her if she'd like to work from home so she could stay on there. So she started since about 2012, I think. Um, and so, so since you guys began about how many videos would you say you've produced? Um, I just looked at that number the other day. It's probably about 2000, um, which is insane, which is short and long. So shorts, there's obviously a lot more of sure. Um, it is very insane. The reason I know is because I have, I don't know if you can see them, but I have earrings and somebody, no one's ever mentioned me having earrings ever ever in a comment huh. and somebody finally did. So I responded to it and just said, Hey, thanks for noticing because <laughs> in about 2000 videos, no one's ever commented on it. So that dad has earrings. And it's like, so I just thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, um, so another thing that strikes me is you've got a brand mm -hmm. that, that has developed, Yep. Um, a look to you, like your screen captures that are, that lead them in. And so that's got to have been, um, rewarding to mm -hmm. develop that all along, um, and to, uh, get to do it with your family. Yeah. I was always kind of in any company that I've worked for when, when I've been brought a project, like a branding project, you know, people always think branding is just a logo and it's just so much more. I always want to put so much into it. And now I was finally able to, to, to the point where, you know, we have a tagline, we have a mission statement, we have a look, we have a color palette, we have how we talk. I have certain emojis I comment with, um, just everything I want to be 
us and I want people to recognize it. And it's, and it's worked and people recognize us and they recognize our videos and they recognize us in public because of, you know, I wear a backwards hat and a lot of people think because I do that, I'm bald. And I'm like, people can wear hats even if they're not bald. <laughs> so I always have to show them, no, I have hair. You know, my son Jackson has started to wear a cutoff um, jean jacket. And then my son Calvin has now started to wear Hawaiian shirts. And like, he loves, like now we all have kind of our thing. So it's just going to keep getting developed even more. And that's what I'm really excited about. When I feel like giving up or I feel like stopping, I think about where we could be in six months if I don't give up. <laughs> you know, and kind of think if I just keep pushing and just keep working, how much, how much further could this be? So not everybody um, has yet, hopefully after this podcast, everybody listening will get on and uh, check you out. But, but for those of you who haven't, I'm going to play just a little audio clip of your recent visit to Discovery Park of America so they can kind of get a sense of uh, what you guys do. We're in Dinosaur Hall here at Discovery Park of America. Don't worry. Yeah. It's mostly bones. Yeah. yeah. We're in Dinosaur Hall. Dinosaur Hall, Discovery Park of America. Slay! This is the Enlightenment Gallery, also known as the Cabinet, Cabinet of, of Curiosity. Curiosity. Speaking of curious, Alexis, is there someone in this suit of armor? Yes. <laughs> so apparently, there's someone in here. Oh, gosh. What else we got in here? So that was obviously a great way for people who've never been to Discovery Park of America to experience it through the fun that you guys are having. Um, and I know your uh, your tagline is fun is a language that we all speak. And you say we you guys are making offbeat family comedy. And so mm -hmm. it was really a great opportunity having you all here, you know, to be able to share Discovery Park in a fun way um, with your listeners who are now 2.46 million. Is that right? Yep. Yep. 2.46 million. It's that's a it's lot a, of subscribers. Yeah, it's it's daunting to think about because when you when you get past a million on any platform you just start to question how did we get there like how how do a million now 2.46 million how did that many people subscribe to us and it honestly it keeps me humble so far it's kept me humble thinking about that i think a lot of you know quote unquote influencers and we don't we are i guess but we call ourselves content creators we call ourselves comedians a lot of people take that number and it just inflates their ego and I think that's where it starts to break down. And I want to be careful, especially with my boys, not to let that happen. And just to kind of keep that, keep it fun and light, because that's our brand. And if we get off brand, everything's going to unravel. Now, because when you were here, mm -hmm. um, there were actually people who recognized, yeah. <laughs> recognized you guys from YouTube. And yeah. um, I know Lauren Jones, who's our events director, her son, you know, was freaked out that you guys <laughs> had been here because yeah. he saw it um, and he was like, what? I know them, you know, so it was really exciting to him. So, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, content creators like you guys are taking some of the space that used to be taken up by folks that we would see on just on TV, yeah. you know, celebrities of that ilk. So um, are you thinking about, you know, how to capitalize on all of this and mm -hmm. this obvious success? You know, do you have like a long-term plan for quote unquote, what's next? I My short-term goal is, across all platforms i just i want to be at about 10 million right now we're at 8.2 million across all platforms my long term goal has become i i want to have i want to have a show i i want to have a show with me and my boys I, I whether on netflix or and i dream big so i know people are probably listening to this maybe rolling their eyes you're just fueling me i love it <laughs> like i I, I want to, I, you got to love it. Um, Hulu, whatever it is, I want to have a show. Um, I'd love it to be, you know, probably like a multi-format show, like a, like a, like a talk show, you know, where we can do all kinds of stuff and we can come back to discovery park when we're on this show with the big cameras and just, 
you know, do it upright. And that's, that's why I reached out. It's, it's part of that thing where I love giving my, be able to, being able to give my kids experiences like discovery park together with us. Cause we were working while we were there, but man, we had just a phenomenal time. And the amount of times they stopped and said, is this real? Are we really doing this? Like <laughs> are, they hired us to do this. I'm like, yeah, it, we, they did. And the way you guys made us feel was, was awesome. So thank you for that. First of all, that was, that was so cool. Like, you know, having our own room with our picture on it, that was amazing. Like the boys just loved it. So, and I, I think the other thing I want to do personally is I want to get into acting. Like I really, and I don't care if it's when I'm, 60 i finally get on a show i want to have a show where i'm you know a reoccurring role you know like that that would be that would be super cool and i don't even well, what's know funny is what's funny is a lot of these videos and what i was thinking was you know you guys would be a natural for i mean you're better than what a lot of what you see on nickelodeon or you know some of those cable shows and honestly better than what you see on network so you know i was thinking you know i'm surprised that they haven't already been gobbled up by somebody you know <laughs> I was watching a, a video clip yesterday of um, Steve Martin. Okay. And Steve Martin's always been asked, how do you be successful in showbiz? And people don't ever like the answer. And I didn't like the answer either because what you just, what you just said, how come you haven't been gobbled up already? Because what Steve Martin says is be so good. They can't not notice. Right. No, and for that, sure. And that's what I'm trying to do. And sometimes I got to, pull back because I put so much pressure on what we do. And if, when I start to do that, it starts to not become fun. So I think just, I think we can do it. It just has to be right. And I just have to be patient. That's the hardest part for me. I'm not a patient person. Um, we've been doing this for four years. And for a lot of people that probably doesn't seem like a long time, but for me, it seems like an eternity. Yeah. And that's why I have to start looking at everything holistically instead of day by day and see everything that we've built behind us and be like, wow, look where this is going. Like, don't panic. If you have a bad day, don't panic. If one video doesn't do great, it's all about the holistic kind of thing. And I really do want to transition this from social media. How much effort have you put into uh, your YouTube channel versus TikTok? Cause you know, I'm going to ask you next about TikTok. So okay. I'm curious. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, we put more effort into our YouTube than anything else. Okay. And the reason I think being, about, yeah, I think ahead. about those people that have only done TikTok. Yeah. You know, and those, those uh, content creators that have only done TikTok. I mean, can you imagine if you had only done TikTok where mm -hmm. your head would be right now as you're debating, are they going to, you know, <laughs> shut it down? Right. Um, you know, well, it's I mean, it, it's it is the thing, though, with with TikTok is. People are. Drawn in by how fast you can grow, you can grow very fast, you can get a lot of views. But for us, we're verified on there with five point four million followers and to be 100% honest and I can show people the books, we don't make any money from TikTok. We don't make a dime. People are, mm. it's not, not all about the money. Mm -hmm. Totally agree with you. I totally, but I still have to feed my family. Yeah. And if it wasn't for YouTube and the consistency that YouTube gives you, as long as you give that consistency back, we wouldn't be here right now. So people who don't know, um, yeah. you, you get compensated on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, based on the number of views, based, yes. based on the number of followers, you know, how does that work? Based on the number of views and how many views you get and how legitimate they actually are, because obviously there's people out there with, with bots and can watch a video for hours and, and things like that, but it's consistency with YouTube. Like if you're being consistent with their algorithm and putting out videos the same time and the same, the same day and everything like that and interacting with your subscribers, they are, they're going to reward you. And I think TikTok, what TikTok did was they brought short form video to the light. They showed everyone the light of how this could work. And then everyone else came behind them and did it better. Now, that's just my opinion. It's been really hard to watch everything with 
TikTok about to be banned and whatever, but but what's been the most difficult thing for me has been listening to people sing its praises and like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And now it's going away. I haven't had that experience. We've had a lot of bad experiences with how they've taken our videos down, removed our content. They've banned us seven times and I've had to fight to get the account back. And I don't understand it. And there's nothing you can do about it because even though I'm a verified creator, I've never had any contact with anyone from TikTok. Yeah, ever. that's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting. <laughs> um, and, and you know, it was uh, interesting from watching the hearings, you know, how a lot of the folks that were asking the questions obviously didn't spend a lot of time on TikTok and they were they were right. asking the questions based on what some of their uh, some of the folks that work for them had come up with. And, you know, just, you know, some of the questions were uh, making it obvious that they didn't really know. And, you know, a lot of that has to do with the, you know, the Chinese and you know ownership mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But, you know, I've I've done some stuff on um TikTok and it is funny how stuff will be taken down that has um absolutely um absolutely nothing uh to do with the actual content itself it's just, it's just there's some weird algorithm thing going on back there um well, so I mean, luke has yeah. a good question in the chat did you see okay. luke's question no. thank you luke always always good to hear from luke because he knows what he's doing um he's wanting to know um about the work that you're doing with the way you pick your thumbnails your the titles of your videos and how that works in relationship with the algorithms mm. to try to get it to try to get your videos to pop up in front of as many people as possible what thoughts going into all that yeah with youtube uh, my secret sauce is i want a two word caption mm. with, with two exclamation points and two hashtags and two of the same emojis. And I do it every time. And now oh, I see that. I see that I'm looking at, at yeah. your YouTube page. <laughs> and I'm afraid to do anything different. <laughs> I'm, to be honest, I'm afraid because it works. I'm afraid to kind of do anything different. I've also noticed if a video does poorly, I can go in and change that caption a little bit to maybe a couple of other words. And it usually picks up, which is pretty cool. Thumbnails for the long form videos are the toughest thing in the world because they say that a thumbnail for a YouTube video is the most important thing. Like for a long form, it's the most important thing. Um, to give you an example, Mr. Beast reportedly spends 10 to $15,000 designing his thumbnails. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I believe it because they say that that's the thing that makes or breaks it. So I try not to think about that when I'm designing it because that could be such a daunting task, but I just do the best that I can and try to come up with something funny and something that looks good when it's small. Well, what's funny is what's interesting is so I'm looking at your page right now. So my one of my favorite graphics is the astronaut food oh, yeah. slayer no way. So yeah. you uploaded that six days ago. Mm -hmm. Um you've gotten ten thousand views. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I'm looking at the let slide. Yeah. The, uh, two days ago, you uploaded a 30 second clip of you sliding down the slide at Discovery Park. That's already gotten 241,000 views. Yep. Why do you suppose that got so many more views? Because we have not established ourselves well until this year as long form creators. Mm. So we've been very sporadic until this, with because shorts have been so much better for us and when you create a long form video it it's costly there's a lot of cost that goes into creating a long form video so this year i've decided for the next two years starting at the beginning of this year we're gonna put one out consistently every week until it pops because it will and that mr beast will say that to everyone is you got to put out consistently for 50 to 100 videos and that's when you'll start seeing some return on that well i'm going to share um i'm going to share the 241,000 uh viewed video of you sliding on my social media for my uh tens of, of followers uh but i i know that uh you know, it's a, that was a great video and it was a lot of fun, but people don't know that until they watch it. So I think it's fascinating, you know, yeah, you got we, them to watch it. And that's another good thing about YouTube is I, 
I tagged Discovery Park in that, and they didn't um, they didn't hurt us for that. On other networks, namely TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, I'm not sure, but if you tag someone in a post, they usually push that post down mm, because they, they really think you're just trying to get attention. And they're, you're just trying to get, you know, in touch with this person or, or whatever. So, you know, a while ago, one of the things that made us really popular on TikTok is we we were duetted by Lizzo. And just I didn't tag her in the video. Everyone else did. That's what you got to do is you got to let everyone else tag this celebrity hmm. who you're trying to get duetted by. And she did it. And it was really cool. But that's what I like about YouTube those I could tag you guys in a video and nothing. And it still is getting views, which is cool. Yeah. That's fascinating. I had no idea. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit adding people and quit uh, <laughs> tagging people. That's, that's why, that's why I'm not huge. I was wondering what it was. Alexis, is that why? I Nailed it. I guess that's it. Um, we're going to take a really quick break. And then when we get back, not everybody has a YouTube channel, but a lot of listeners have kids on here. So I'm going to ask you for a few parenting tips. So uh, we'll do that as soon as we get back from the break. Looking for a family-friendly vacation destination? No matter what you like, you can find something to love in Tennessee. Visit Tennessee for the mountains, the music, the rivers, the food, the attractions, and so much more. Visit tnvacation.com to start planning today. Thank you, Alexis. I hope everyone out there is enjoying Real Foot Forward from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. This is your host, Scott Williams, and our special guest today is Josh Cooper from Uploads of Fun, or Josh the Dad on his socials, and his sons are Jackson and Calvin. His wife is Rachel. I want to ask you a few things about parenting. Now I am I don't know if I'm I don't know if you're ever done parenting but but my girls are now young young women who probably don't need a dad. So um now they just need a buddy. Uh, uh I call them I tell them whenever they say when they whenever they push back on my advice I say look just think of me as your life coach. You know, I'm free. I'm a free life coach. So yeah. um anyway, so so talk to us about uh parenting. Did you did you have when you first had your kids, did you have a vision for the kind of dad you wanted to be? No, I, I really didn't. I always knew that I wanted kids and that's where it stopped. I really didn't know what kind of parent I wanted to be. The only thing that I went into it with is I want to try to do as the best I can for them. That was how I was thinking. And, and I really didn't know what that meant right away. I mean, I think I think we might have been a little too young when we started but I think we're doing I think we're doing really good now and I'm I'm proud of it but it's also a thing and I think as a parent Scott you'll you'll probably resonate with this it's also a thing like you're always working on and you're never going to get right and you even though there's a lot of wins you usually just see the losses <laughs> and that's what I deal with in my head is is always trying to get better if you have six kids, there's six different ways to 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 be as good a parent as you can because they're all so different. They all need so many different things. Yeah, you just made my anxiety spike like, really <laughs> high because <laughs> six kids. Whoa, I only have two, by the way. Yeah, no, there you go. Well, hey, you know, maybe you'll have some more eventually. Um, nope. so um, with with you working so closely with your kids, do you ever find it challenging to also guide and discipline them while at the same time you're working together? I mean, that's a great question. And I thought about it a lot because I get a lot of um, parents and kids alike questioning what we do and how could you do this with your kids and how could you let them say this and how could you let them say that? But what I've, what I've found is that when kids have a place that they can be open and honest and free without repercussion and you can give that space to them, they just seem to behave better. <laughs> and I've noticed it in school 
in and they're homeschooled now but when they were in school we would we would always wonder oh man calvin's gonna be he's gonna be trouble in school you know because he's gonna be a chatterbox teachers are always like he's so well behaved he's so well behaved and then i'll watch a video where he's wiling out and going crazy and i'm like <laughs> maybe that's why because he has that space to be free and mm -hmm. we're so open and honest with our kids too about everything and you know, there is sometimes a sexual component to what we're talking about. Completely fine with that. And I want it to be like that. I want them to learn that stuff from me and not from school, from Timmy, who learned it on the Internet, you know, and and it, it's led to some awkward questions with kids is probably the most famous thing that we do. And people recognize that more than anything. And it's led to so many great conversations after the camera's off, you know, because my wife always says, if I write a video or I'm going to ask a question, she's like, are you ready to explain this to them? <laughs> and that a lot of times will, will be the kind of decision of whether we're going to do a video or a question or not. Because if there's a certain topic that I want to ask them about, I got to be willing to explain it to them, put it on their level, and then kind of live with it and, you know, let them ask me even more questions about it. It's always been like that since they were little. I don't, I won't say any body name parts, but we don't, we don't give fake body name parts to other than in our videos to be funny. We've always told them the truth and what they're actually called. And I think that's important. And then um, do you guys incorporate uh, faith in any of your videos that you're doing now? So I am a believer. Uh, I am a, a Christian and into their lives. Yes. Into our videos. It's in there if you look hard enough. Um, but I don't want to be, I don't ever want to be a Christian brand. Um, but when, when things happen around this world, I do try to get on and comment about them and give a commentary as best as I can. And I, I want to do that every time it happens. I want to be like the Mr. Rogers of, of this generation because people always look to him when things went on. Even when, you know, when 9-11 happened, he was retired. He was already off the air and they pulled him back on the air just to talk about it. Um, I think faith drives, it, drives everything that I do. And I want people to look at what we're doing and see that we are different but I don't ever want to be a Christian brand. I feel like a lot of times Christian brands and even churches can be very, they can turn people off too much and they put too much of their self into it. When if you're a Christian, you should know that that's not how it should be. And it shouldn't be about your certainties in your mind. It should be about your faith and what it says in the Bible. So that's what I believe. And we, me and the boys, try to do daily devotionals and work out day. We work out daily. We get, we've got that one, right. We're trying to get the devotions every day. And it's been cool just to, to talk to them like real and tell them my shortcomings and my mistakes. That's another thing. A lot of parents won't admit to their kids is mistakes. You know, if, if I yell at one of my kids and, and they didn't, and I, I was in the wrong, I go to them and I apologize and I tell them how I was wrong because I think that's where that can be modeled for, for kids from their parents. And it should be. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, you guys are, uh, at least from this one independent outsider, your kids are very lucky, uh, to be living the life they're living. So it's, a. uh, uh it's a, a blessing, I'm sure, to be able to to be around them while they're growing up and to be so close to them um, while you're going through these years. Mm -hmm. um, do either of them, have either of them expressed aspirations for what's next for them? Do they, do they want to be a, an engineer or a, an actor or what, 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 what are you hearing from, from your two youngsters? So my oldest son, Jackson, he's 14. He wants to be the, the best way to say it is herpetologist. He wants to work with reptiles in some form or fashion. And since the pandemic, he has been. And now in his room, he has three pretty big snakes and one blue tongued skink. You know, so yep. he really wants to do that. And he's really into it and he's passionate about it. And he's 
very knowledgeable about it. And Calvin we should might... note that he had a great time uh, with our our snakes here at Discovery Park. Oh, he was he loved it so much being able to go behind the scenes. And, you know, we've been to a couple of other places, too. And when he's there, he's like. They're having him help out and we're, and he's like loving it. Like he's basically working and he just doesn't know that he is. And I'm like, <laughs> that's the job you should do because you're, you're passionate about it. You don't even notice it's work. Um, and then Calvin, he is uh, 11 and he wants to be a streamer. He wants to be a, a professional video game streamer. And he is doing very well with that too. Um, that's why we have this whole setup here. You know, he has, two cameras he's actually sponsored by a pc brand um they they sent us a brand new pc about a month ago and i i couldn't be i couldn't be prouder of either of them they they teach me so much all the time and we were even working out the other day and jackson <laughs> we were, we we're going to do those the workout twice because it was only 15 minutes and i'm like you're gonna do it twice he's like dad it's easy it's all in your head it's all in your head <laughs> And hey, I did it. I did it twice. He, he pulled me through. That's great. Well, and you did make me think of something that I'm curious about after watching uh, content creators on YouTube. Do you get like occasionally just a free box of something from a brand who's wanting to see their brand? Does that does that happen to you guys? It does. It does happen. And yesterday, it why well, sometimes I reach out. Sometimes they just send stuff. But one I reached out to yesterday, they sent probably $4,000 worth of product. And it was like movie prop replicas from like the Goonies and Back to the Future. And I, we were just uh, Masters of the Universe, He-Man, uh, Thundercats. I was for like an hour. We were just sitting there looking at this stuff. And I'm like, wow, it's so yeah. cool. Yeah. That's amazing. So That's cool. really fun. And we're collectors. And and I'm like, wow, if we can get to the point where we can collect and don't have to like pay for this stuff, I would that would be super cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it's that's so amazing. And food, that's what I'd be after. I see these TikTokers that are sampling <laughs> food and stuff, and I know that they got the food free to sample. Sure. Yeah. I'm like, that's I, I need to I need to go down that route. There's a, a famous comedian that I like. His name is Gabriel Iglesias. They call him Fluffy. Um uh -huh. I heard him talking about it one time and people were calling him out on tagging like food companies and all these other companies in his posts, and he's like, Why? If they want to send me some free stuff, why not? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not asking you as an audience to do anything, really. And that's what I say to our people. I'm not asking y'all to do anything except watch and share and comment. Like you don't. We're gonna have a clothing line coming out probably in the summer. We're not gonna do like uploads of fun merch. We're actually gonna have a clothing line, and I'll push that. But I don't push merch. Like I, no one has to buy our stuff. All you got to do is watch. It honestly really helps more than more than merch does if you just watch and, and share and maybe even comment. Well, we're going to uh, put links to your uh, to your socials and also to the episode where you guys visited Discovery Park. We'll cool. put that in the show notes. Um, but for people who are listening and they're driving their car and they don't have time to check, can you tell us where folks ought to go and follow you? The best thing to do is just go to uploadsoffun.com slash stuff or just go to uploads of .com. we've had a website since the beginning because of my background like a lot of people laugh that we have a website but i'm like you have to you gotta have a website so uploads of .com slash stuff will have all the short links to everywhere you need to go and just everything you need to know about us more than you probably want to know <laughs> well thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to chat with us today Oh, thank you so much for having me. I, I do love talking. And thanks to all you listeners who joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. America.com.